It's great to have our, some of four of my good friends on here today on this uh, Zoom call that we've got. Uh, you know, we're talking about Easter ideas today. You know, reality is five and a half weeks from today, April 4th, uh, is Easter. Uh, if most of us want to go back to last year, we were, a lot of you guys were caught off guard uh, last Easter because of COVID. Uh, middle of March uh, is when, you know, all this pandemic kind of in the forefront of all of our lives. Uh, and when we shut down our churches, which is something that most guys never dreamed that they would do uh, for in-person meetings, uh, most guys thought that by Easter, they'd be meeting again and just kind of went with the flow and were planning to meet together. And then they were kind of caught scrambling the last week or two because uh, they couldn't meet in person. Uh, so we've learned a lot since this time last year uh, and what we can do to be prepared for Easter, which is for most churches, uh, the Super Bowl Sunday of the year where you've got a great attendance, a great opportunity to, to witness and win people to Christ. Uh, so what I want to do today is we're just going to talk to these guys. Uh, and I got there's guys from all across the country, uh, different size churches, uh, different size towns they're in. Uh, and just to hear from them on just some brainstorming. This is just think of this as a brainstorming session. Uh, where we're going to talk about Easter ideas for 2021 and how we can be best prepared for it. Uh, so for my friends, Nathan Birch, pastors in uh, here in Aurora, Missouri, not far from me, uh, in Springfield. Ray Roten, pastors in Yukon, Oklahoma, or outside of Oklahoma City. Uh, Randy Abel is up uh, north from all of us in Ames, Iowa, and Brian Moore is on the West Coast over in, in California. Uh, guys, take just a second. Uh, I know I just kind of introduced you, but introduce yourself just a little bit and share what's what services kind of look like in your church right now. Before we get to Easter, uh, talk about what's, what's it look like? How are you responding today to COVID? What's it look like uh, in your ministries? And since Misery Loves Company, let's just take a second and reflect back a year ago what you had to do last year uh, for Easter. Don't you know, spend a lot of time on it. I want to spend a lot of time talking about this Easter, but take a second, introduce yourself. Nathan, why don't you start? Well, hey guys, good to be with you. Good to see my friends, fellow pastors. Um, this time last year, uh, our town put in a pretty strict uh, guideline. They, they, the social distancing, the masks weren't in yet, not yet, but they limited occupancy to like 25 people. And our church that just to do that would be, we would have had to have done a lot of services to accomplish that. So we actually, for Easter last year, were online only, which I, I hated it. I hated it. Our Easter is usually just a, a larger version of what we do on a regular Sunday because we want people to come back and, and you know, it used to be maybe a, a production or a cantata. We, we don't do anything like that. There's just more of a regular Sunday. So so we really had to um, adjust and, and, and we really felt it hurt us. Uh, I, I, where we're at now is we're at about 75% attendance back in house. Um, we don't have the restrictions in Aurora that, that the other cities do. Uh, we don't have to do the every other seats, the masks, the limitations on occupancy. So, so we're, we're fortunate in that regard. Uh, and we've actually ironically seen visiting families who um, were just tired of being in their home or their churches are, are sometimes not even meeting at all. So, so it's a very, a very total 180 from last year where we're at today. But uh, God is blessing and we're encouraged for uh, what's coming up and uh, just praying for some continued relief from the situation. Yeah, good. Uh, Ray, take a second, introduce yourself and your ministry there in Yukon. Sure. Uh, Ray Roten um, here in Yukon, Oklahoma, uh, Middle America, right outside of OKC. Bethel Community Church is the church I pastor. I've been here five years. And uh, we've, in the past five years, as far as Easter goes, we've had all the experiences, you know, from big productions to um, simple service. And so last year, you know, just like everybody else, we were planning way ahead our Easter service, actually our entire year, you know, they just kind of thrown in the trash. Um, once Easter came along, we already knew we weren't going to have in-person services uh, not that there was major restrictions. It was more of the feel uh, kind of, of, the, of the environment. I think back in March, April of last year, we were kind of participating in something that, that Oklahoma really wasn't. It was all just a game. Now we actually have a lot of tons of cases every day and people are acting like 
nothing, you know? Um, so things have shifted uh, this year for sure from last year, but um, I think the fear and all that was in, in the, in the way last year, but um, our Easter services online is probably one of the worst recording, the worst planning experience I've ever had. I think quality, probably the best quality we ever had, but the experience itself, I hated every second of it. Um, it's not normal for a shepherd to be away from a sheep and it just, it felt terrible. Um, and so resurrection day wasn't as fun as it could have been. Um, it just, it was just a bad deal. So uh, once we were able to get back into person, you know, our services right now, we're about 65, 70% back in person, a lot online. Um, and it kind of fluctuates right now we're in the blizzard. So it's different. Um, the, the, the weather's kind of um, adjusting uh, right now, but as far as our Easter this year, we're planning on having our in-person. One of our philosophies is not to overdo Easter so that people can come before or after and have a similar experience. Uh, so we're not trying to do something totally extravagant, um, but we'll, we'll add a few moments here and there. And so this Easter, I'm really looking forward to being with uh, people, with our family. And then of course the short run from Easter to Mother's Day, Mother's Day is actually a bigger service for us than, than Easter. And so getting kind of some momentum uh, through the year, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, one thing I will say, the pandemic has done has brought a lot of hungry people for the gospel. Um, tons of visitors in the last six months at our church. Uh, most of our volunteers right now, I'll bet you 80% of our volunteers are new. Um, people that have recently accepted Christ, given their lives to Christ, been baptized even. Um, and then just people that have been out of church for a couple decades are starting to come wow. back. It's, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty exciting to see. So I think this resurrection day, will be a powerful day for people to celebrate the power of the resurrection. Good, good, good. That's exciting. Uh, and we'll talk about some more of that here in just a second. Randy, introduce yourself uh, and your ministry up in Iowa. Sure. Randy Abel, Ames, Iowa. We're a college town of about a hundred and some thousand up here. And uh, to, it's been really cold this weekend. Negative <laughs> uh, uh, 15 Sunday morning. Uh, a year ago, uh, we also were completely shut down. We were limited to uh, 10 people. And mm. for all of, uh, you know, last half of March, April, uh, I don't know, some, some knuckleheads in my parking lot, literally counting uh, how many people uh, are coming in our church. I mean, if we got over 10, he was going to call the police. So uh, it, it, was, it was real serious here real quick. Wow. Um, we're, uh, we got to go back to in-person services in May, but under uh, some real heavy restrictions of uh, extreme social distancing, uh, sanitation between the change of anything. So if, you, if somebody sat in a chair, it had to be uh, Lysol before somebody else could sit in a, within 48 hours, you know, and, and uh, but that's okay. We got back at it, started back in May with about 50 people in person, plus, you know, our best efforts at online. Um, right now we're, we're running maybe 300 in person, couple hundred online. Um, and I am, am actually extremely excited about Easter because just like my other brother said that this last year, uh, I, we've picked up families online who now attend in person hmm. who didn't have a church home before. And although our salvations were down, uh, in almost every other category, we did a bunch of uh, drive-in church services where we'd have uh, 250, 300 people and had salvations for six drive-in services in a row. And, and uh, some of those now are coming to church. We've had people join the church over the winter. And so I'm excited, uh, even though we have to approach it way differently with an in-person mindset and an online mindset, I I'm excited about it. Yeah, very good. Yeah, that's exciting. Uh, Brian, introduce yourself and your ministry out in California. No, no restrictions at all, I know. So, <laughs> uh, Brian, I'm uh, in Anaheim Cross Point Church, and we also have a campus in Ventura. Um, you, you ask about last Easter. I think that was like five years ago. I don't oh, remember really like much it. about last Easter. There is so much I feel like that has happened between then and now, and and so little that has happened at the same time. It's like being quarantined and. At sometimes I feel like we're we're moving at snail's pace, uh, but um, la last year uh, we were obviously online like everyone else, and um, you know really just uncertain. I mean, uncertain about what the future holds. I remember last year was like, how are we going to financially be able to survive this? What is this going to look like long term staffing? Are we going to have to let people go? And 
uh, I feel blessed just reflecting on it right now. Of uh, it didn't financially impact um, us the way that it, it could have, and and uh, I feel blessed. I think the the lesson that I learned off of last Easter was we had to really pivot online and really pivot how are we going to bring people online, and we learned a lot about um, telling your story on social media and the power of people telling the story of how Jesus has changed your life. I, I like to tell people, you have the second greatest story ever told, tell it. The first greatest story is Jesus, second greatest story is yours. And I think that we leveraged that well last year uh, to, for our social media side and really to drive uh, online engagement. And that's something that was a lesson that we wanna continue on as we think about this, this Easter as well. Uh, our current uh, attendance stuff, we, we were at about 20, 25% this past uh, week, which when this is, you know, I don't know when you're watching this, but mid-February, um, we, we took a jump to about 33% of our attendance of where we were pre-COVID here in Anaheim. Uh, there's more vaccinations coming and uh, we're, people are, are, are feeling a little more comfortable. So we feel encouraged by that. Our, our Ventura campus, uh, as of this date, is still meeting outside. And so it's still an outdoor only uh, venue, but they have um, about a hundred people that are showing up outdoors every week. Uh, so we're, we're encouraged that we can get back indoors there here soon, but uh, that's a little state of where we're at right now. Randy, you guys are meeting outdoors up in Iowa too, right? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He, he's talking about outdoor services and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. It's a different world. And that's why I got you four guys on here. So we're kind of scattered all around. So a lot of guys almost wish they could go back to outdoor services right now These after these last couple of weeks. But hey, let's take a second. Let's look at this Easter uh, coming up. And I've prepped you guys with three or four questions that I want us to kind of talk through and discuss. Um, the first question is this, just kind of broad picture. Uh, what's What are you planning for Easter to look like this year? Uh, what are you doing for the actual service? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about some other things like what are your kids going to do and what are you going to promote it and different things, but kind of broad stroke, what's Easter going to look like for you this, this year and maybe compared to the last few years, is it, how much different is that? So uh, Nathan, why don't you just kind of share what you guys are planning to do in Aurora uh, this year for Easter? So we kind of start, we look at like an Easter week. Uh, we'll meet the Thursday before Easter and take communion, which actually will be the first time uh, in a long time that we've taken communion. We, we are always very cautious about contact, food and things like that. So we'll meet Thursday night and, and celebrate the, you know, the joining of the body and the blood. And, and uh, when we Easter, as it's already been said, I think Brian said it, it feels like it's been forever since we had just a typical Easter service. Uh, so we're actually going to um, meet early and and have like a like a church-wide family breakfast, time of fellowship. One, one thing that's happened in this whole time is we have a lot of new people coming to church. It, it, it has just been phenomenal how the investment in the online, we've, we've been live streaming for five, six years before this, but we really spent like $15,000 to get our, our media broadcast first class because it just wasn't, it just wasn't. And a lot of people, I had a man in my church last week, he watched us online the week before, he said, I would have never come in and visited a church just cold turkey. I saw what you looked like and I'm here today. And he started online giving immediately. It was just awesome, it was, it, even in spite of this. So we're going to do just a larger version on Easter of what we normally look like on a Sunday. Maybe maybe some extra songs. I know our uh, our drama team's got something, but it will be it will be all things that happen throughout the year. Uh, just a longer service, and uh, we're pretty excited. We don't have uh, we we took a position that you need to police yourself on the social distancing, the masks and things like that. So our church has pretty much been either they stay at home or they come. We don't have a lot of masks or anything. So we probably on a normal Easter will have about 500 people and we expect probably 3.30, I would guess. So we'll be we'll have one big service and the balcony will be available. Uh, but we're just, we're hoping God brings us new families, which he has this whole last year. So in spite of the trials, it's, it, there's been a lot of triumph. 
Yeah, good. Hey, you talked about doing communion on the Thursday before, uh, and have you not? Well, what's it going to look like? Are you? How are you going to do communion? You know, that's kind of a delicate thing. I know a lot of guys have wondered or questioned how to do it. What are your plans for that, Nathan? So we wanted to do communion um, at some point through the year, but if you recall, they had like back ordered on the pre-packaged communion, the wafers and the cups. You, you couldn't get them for the longest time. So last Easter, we actually did a video on how to make your own unleavened bread and did communion uh, through the live stream. I know there was some, you know, some talk about whether or not that counted, but we, we wanted to do it. This year, um, I mean, we'll precautions prepping it right? But it's going to be a real, it's going to be the real deal. We're going to, we're going to hand out the elements in house. And if somebody chooses not to take it for, for their reasons, that's fine. Like we, at some point we have to not allow the fear to, to take away from our faith. Right. I mean, there's, a, there's that line between, you know, being realistic and having faith and being reasonable, but, but we're, just going back to the way we've done it before. It's It's been a year. Yeah. Uh, Ray, what's uh, Easter going to look like for you guys this year? Kind of broad stroke, big picture. What's it look like? Sure. Uh, we'll have two services um, expecting high energy. Our, our volunteers to be highly engaged. Some of these will be their first time to volunteer in a, an Easter service. Um, so from the door greeters all the way to the ushers and the Anybody in our you know our host team that does the coffee and the biscuits and the donuts and all that stuff, we'll have all the normal stuff. Um, kind of like Nathan, we're gonna have like an Easter week, Palm Sunday, the Sunday before, we'll have communion. Uh, we do the prepackaged communion, uh, so we'll we'll have those. Um, most likely, we'll have them already distributed, um, either that or or they'll get them on the way in. We like to do something a little more intimate, but uh, just where we are uh, with as far as people's you know ease and comfort we're gonna do something a little different on that end on palm sunday but um really high energy not too different from any of normal sunday um and really just trying to engage volunteers uh because the volunteer we like volunteers to have a lot of fun um, and easter is just one of those days where we want just high energy um and so that's what we're, we're planning for as far as just an overview kind of a, a broad view of it yeah randy how about you guys well, we, we're expecting a really good day, and uh, I, I get the uh, some things, it will be normal, you know. Uh, uh, we'll, we always make sure that our orchestra plays and our choir sings. Of course, we have to figure out how to space them out. A lot of times we do what I call a Zoom musical, so they've pre-recorded their special, and then whether it's online or even in the sanctuary, it's on the screen, you know, all the Zoom boxes, and actually people really, I think, enjoy that. Um, a lot of our attention, though, is going to the to the online aspect of it, and uh, we'll be doing uh, some musical teasers and some sermon uh, video clip promotions, probably starting uh, a week and a half or two weeks out. And uh, but we'll make them so that they're going to benefit us whether somebody comes in person or joins us online. But uh, we, uh, you know, we're, we're, we've got a program where everything we do, we can put up on every social media platform there is. And, uh, and when we do that, we see results. And up here, maybe like other guys, we see the first visit to the online service for a bit. You know, maybe it's a few weeks or even a few months. And then, then I'll get an email or then somebody walks through the door and they, they're like, hey, Pastor Abel. And of course, I don't have a clue who they are. And, you know, they've been watching for weeks or months already online. Uh, we do a, a few things. Uh, you know, I'm trying to find that sweet spot balance. I don't want people who are online to feel like they're left out. So we will do a few things in person, like our we have a big famous Mediterranean breakfast, you know, eat like the disciples ate. We do that on Palm Sunday and Easter. Uh, but we probably won't promote that as much because we don't want the online folks to feel left out. So, uh, so that's, that's probably how we're thinking this year. Hmm. What's your Mediterranean breakfast look like? You do it and you do it two Sundays in a row. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, homemade hummus and pita and uh, figs and dates and Turkish coffee and, uh, you know, fresh fruits and stuff like that. I mean, it's pretty cool. T tabbouleh, you know, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. People come, I'm not kidding you. There's always somebody that says, I'm here for the breakfast, you know. <laughs> uh, anyway, we, so we're just trying to, 
just find that nice approach where yes, in person is going to be great, but we don't want that online person to feel like they've been left out of anything. And I'd encourage everybody to really think about your retention rate uh, uh, for your online. So I've, I've become a student of that this year. And I can tell you there are some ways you can start your service that you lose new people. And there are ways you can start your service that you keep new people. Mm. And, uh, you know, like, so for us, I do a 15 second intro video. Now it only shows up online, not in person, where I'm basically telling them, here's what we're going to do. And here's what I'm preaching on. Yeah, stay tuned, you know, and we've, it's funny that 15 second online intro help retention big time. And then also whatever song you lead off with, it better be great. Uh, and that also helps uh, your your retention. And what and we've just learned for for us up here. I know it's different for everybody. There's a sweet spot of uh, you can sing this many songs, but then that's one too many, uh, and and just different things. So we we really tried that. We now we're putting our in-person services together with online in mind. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, Brian, how about you guys? I know Easter's one of your big days. What's what's it look like for you? Yeah, I would say very similar to what Randy just said. You know, the the thing, the the drum I've been beating is fidgetal. Uh, it's about our physical campus and our digital experience together. And it's like for us, which wing is more important on an airplane, the right wing or the left wing? Yes, they're both important. And so for us, we're putting we're putting a lot of attention on both physical, what we're doing here, as well as digital. Uh, so things like sponsored ads on our live Easter uh, service so that uh, we're right when we're going, people are able to pop onto that service right at that time. Uh, we're, we're doing some things around um, our theme. So our theme this year is old life to new life. And we'll be using the graves to garden song uh, around just this, this new life in Christ. Uh, which that theme won out just barely our, our, our team brainstorms out all these themes and and i really like the second one better but but i got outvoted straight out of quarantine great picture of <laughs> jesus in the res in the resurrection straight out of the grave but 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 we chose to go uh with the uh, old life the new life uh gra graves the garden you can uh, have jesus like ripping off a mask and throwing all you're going to do yeah <laughs> <that's right. laughs> we are going to do baptisms uh, and so we, we will have uh, bab baptisms. We, we usually do baptism every Easter. I, I don't think there's a better day to get baptized. Amen. Every day is a good day to get baptized. But man, that picture of the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, uh, we, we do the spontaneous baptisms. And uh, we've, we've been doing that for, for years. And it just works great. We usually see a lot of people. So we'll store up. Uh, we have baptism this Sunday, but then this will be the last baptism that we'll have until Easter. And that always brings a lot of people to see their friends get baptized, which just brings a little bit more to the uh, to the energy and the excitement there as well, too. So those are a few things we have uh, we have planned for Easter. Brian, talk about that, uh, the baptism part, just a second. How do you handle baptism with all the COVID protocols? I know you don't change the water out or that kind of stuff, but what? how do you how do you handle that? You know, we have we've said that we are becoming all things to all men that we might reach some. And so even right now, we have indoor services, outdoor services in, in Anaheim. We've got services in our lobby to where if you just want to be around five people, around TVs, we've got that all over. And so we we, we're kind of saying we're going to move forward on stuff and let people self-select where they want to go. And so there's some that will self-select that they don't want to do baptism, uh, but, but for us, uh, we, we've not decided to make covid safe baptisms. We've just kind of said, this is what we're doing. And what we have found in our own congregation here in California is about 30% of people are green light. Um, you know, 30% are, are yellow light, uh, very cautious. You know, the other third, it's about a third, third, third. And so we're really going after the green lighters uh, on our baptism more than we are the yellow and the red. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. But you talked about your theme. Uh, the other guys, have you guys nailed down your theme or what you're planning to preach on uh, for Easter? What are you guys preaching on for your theme? I'm kind of going back and forth. I, 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 I was laughing at Brian's second idea because I've been looking at something like that. Brian, if I use it, 
I, I will give you credit, brother. Okay. Oh, um, I, I think we're in such a unique time. It, it being unique is also where we need to be. Um, so, you know, I haven't really settled on a, on a theme yet. My staff and I were just talking about it last week and we really hadn't come to some sort of, of cohesion and, 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 and agreement, but we are leaning towards um, taking, I don't want to say this, um, recognizing the current we're in and, and using the Easter story as, as the, uh, the remedy to it. So that, I guess if that's, if I was to explain it, that's where we're at right now. Just haven't nailed it down. Yeah. Ray or Randy, you guys have your theme or your sermon ready to go? At least ideas. Yes. What are you doing, Ray? Yeah, um, ours, we're, we're in a, our, our year is the year of alignment. Uh, we're calling it alignment. Uh, we started the year going through the book of Philippians, uh, where we are aligning ourselves with Christ. Um, Paul's in prison. He's writing this to the church. It's a very friendly, a very loving letter, but he's also calling people uh, to action as far as you know, for me to live as Christ. And um, chapter three gets into, and we've kind of tailored it so that it lands on Easter. Uh, but it's chapter three, eight through 11, where, where Paul is talking through suffering and dying. And he says, either way, either through suffering or dying, I want to experience the power of the resurrection. And so our theme for the day is the power of the resurrection. Um, that's what all our music is going to be around. That's what our um, graphics and promotional and bumper video, all that stuff's going to be around the power of the resurrection. And a lot of people specifically right now, after a year of COVID, um, they're either tired of it, they're scared. Um, after the, the recent, you know, political upheaval that's happened in our country, a lot of people are feeling very anxious, um, depending on where they land, you know, politically, there's a lot of unrest. But there's also a lot of talk about in times, there's a lot of talk about tribulation, there's a lot of talk about are we going to be in the tribulation? Are we going to be raptured? All this crazy talk that's really distracted. And, and I want for our church in particular, this alignment is that uh, Jesus never promised lack of tribulation. He actually said, take your cross, follow me. And Paul specifically said, man, whether it's through tribulation or suffering or through death, um, I'm going to experience the power uh, that Jesus, that rose Jesus from the dead. And so we're going to really hone in on that perfect Sunday for it. Um, really, really pumped about it and really excited about um, sharing that with our community. Good. Randy, what's your theme? Well, I mean, uh, you know, I've, I've been here for uh, 19 years. And uh, so for 19 years, I've preached on all the classic Easter passages. This year, I wanted to make it about what if we die. And so I'm preaching on Lazarus come forth. And, this, you know, of course, it's the Lord who proved that he also could rise from the dead. But this year, it's just very uh, personal. Well, what if we die? And what, what we need if we die is the eternal life that Jesus offers. And he proves that he can offer that when he brings Lazarus back physically to life. And so I, I'm, I'm approaching it that way because even up here, there's still... Uh, you know, a lot of people still fearing things and fearing death, and I'm I'm hoping to tell them, boy, Jesus has got what you need, whether you live or die. He's got eternal life. Yeah, good. Hey, let's. Uh, I want to speed up through these last few questions. I want to value your time. Uh, a couple of the questions: What are you going to do to promote? If you got your theme already nailed down, uh, when do you start promoting? How do you decide what to promote? Are you promoting on social media, graphics, emails, letters, snail mail? What are you doing? How, how are you going to promote uh, your Easter services this year? Nathan, what are you guys doing? Well, of course, we'll do the regular social media graphic, you know, share it on your page or, you know, we've looked at the, the sponsored ads through Facebook. Um, one that we're going to do this year is we're going to get Easter eggs, put a invitation to church in it and send them with our kids at a children's church. And they're going to take them to school and, and give them to a kid that they know doesn't go to church. Um, and just, just a simple way. Is it kind of skirting around some of the, some of the ways that the school tries to restrict, um, you know, religious and solicitation. Yeah, kind of, but um that's one thing that we're going to do inside the school system this year to see what happens. If it gets in the hands of the parents and, and they come great. Uh, just something new that, that I, I stole from another church. We didn't make up, make it up. 
and uh, see how that works. Those are really the two things we're going for this year. Yeah, good. Ray, you guys do anything different this year? Or what are you guys doing? Uh, nothing really different. Uh, the biggest success we have every year is ever, just everyone bring one and word of mouth. Uh, find people that don't go to church anywhere. This is the one time they might come. And uh, especially here in Oklahoma, you know, most people come if you invite them once. And so we're trying to just make it a friend day. You know, everybody bring somebody and uh, word of mouth. We'll do the Facebook stuff. We'll do the social media stuff too. And probably building up to it a couple weeks before, but not um, here in Oklahoma, people don't make plans too far in advance. So we're trying to capture the uh, kind of the FOMO there at the last minute. Yeah, good. Randy, how about you guys? Uh, we'll be doing everything we can think of. So we'll have normal social media, but we're adding in those musical and sermon snippet promos. And again, in everything we do, we'll be both saying whether it's in person at these time slots or online at these time slots, you're welcome either way. Well, we still, on big Sundays, we still put a banner out by the road and there's somebody that'll drive in that's solid on Friday, you know, and, uh, uh, and some, j just, just across the board, uh, I I'm, we'll just do everything we can think of. Yeah. Ryan, how about you guys? Sorry about that, guys. Uh, one thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a free T-shirt giveaway uh, actually two weeks before. And so we'll start a series three weeks before Easter called The Best News Ever. And that's where we'll talk about, hey, your second greatest story ever told is your story. Uh, and we're going to give everyone a free T-shirt that comes to church. Um, we um, People will lose their minds for free T-shirts. I don't understand how CEOs of large companies like lose their mind over a $5 shirt, but they do. And so we're, we will do that, get them into the series. Uh, that's the draw. So it, it's almost like a mini big day just over the t-shirt. And then we'll teach them evangelism that day. I think we got to teach people how to share their faith. We have to teach people um, how to invite their friends. We have to teach them uh, how to share their story online on social media and then use a, a hook back. And I think that there's one thing is as us talking about church and we'll do all the things on that, but it's more powerful when you get people doing it on their social media accounts, talking about church and their testimony and their experience and where they are. And so we'll leverage that. We're, we're doing a new thing called uh, in that series, best news ever is uh, an acronym where we're going to call bless uh, B L E S S and bless is all around evangelism. So it's about beginning with prayer. Who are we praying for? Uh, who are we investing our lives in? And then we'll have these little cards uh, that everybody puts on their mirror. And I always tell them, put them on your mirror in your bathroom. Don't put them, ladies, don't put them in your purse. Guys, don't put them in the wallet. You'll never see them again. That purse is a black hole. That wallet, when you're cleaning it out a year later, you'll find that little card. Put it on your bathroom mirror so that whenever you're brushing teeth every day. Here's the three local non-church people that I'm praying for. So we begin with prayer. And then we'll do a three-week series on, hey, here's my three people. L, listen to people's needs and listen to people's stories. So we're asking people, who, who you listen to? Who you listen to? And, uh, you know, we, we don't need to talk. I think sometimes in the church world, uh, we've, we've amputated our arms and our feet, and our, you know, and all we have left is our mouth, uh, where I, I think it's a lot of like, who are we listening to? Um, and then E is eating with people. Man, we believe that relationships are really where the strongest evangelism comes. Relational evangelism is our strongest connection. So who are you eating with? Who are you serving? And then share Jesus with people. And so we, we begin with prayer, listen to needs, eat with people, serve people, share Jesus with them. So we'll do a three-week series before that. And I want to ingrain that bless so much into our groups that just like we've ingrained into our growth groups, uh, bring a snack. They all know to bring a snack, all right? They all know to pray. They all know that. I want to ingrain that bless so much into our growth groups and our small groups that you don't come to a group without asking about your blessed conversations. Hey, who, who did you guys listen to this week? Hey, uh, who, who did you serve this week? Hey, who, who's somebody that doesn't know Christ that you ate with? So we're really going to drive that free t-shirt, the best news ever series, along with the, uh, the bless piece. Yeah, really good. Uh, I like that. Um, have you read Dave Ferguson's new book called Bless? I have not. Yeah, uh, it's 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 not like that, obviously, but it's it's a great book. 
Uh, I thought you might have used that as a brainstorm. Hey, a um, couple more questions. What are you doing to uh, for your kids? What are you doing for your kids on Easter Sunday? Because uh, that's always, a, you know, another big emphasis. You know, every every year when I was a pastor, uh, a lot of our Easter revolved around our kids' ministry. So uh, is that something you guys are doing different or special, or how do you navigate your kids' ministry uh, this year on Easter? Nathan? Well, we're like Brian. We always baptize on Easter. I, I think starting off with baptism at the first thing, you know, we, we, we don't have the spontaneous baptism, but ones that have been saved in Awana and the youth and stuff. So we've already talked to them. They're ready to go. So we start with baptism and the kids are always up to see baptism. We bring all the kids up from downstairs in the balcony so they can see the baptism that that initiates questions. They'll go downstairs, they'll have their children's church, the different things, and then they'll go outside for an Easter egg hunt. We, you know, uh, it, it's it's still a big deal. Um, a lot of places don't do community Easter egg hunts. Last year at Halloween, our church literally was the only event in town. And it, that's it. No citywide trick-or-treating downtown, uh, no other churches. It was a, I mean, it was, it was insane how many people came to it. So we expect people coming to church this year just for the Easter egg hunt, because there'll be lack of options for other people. So that'll be going on uh, outside during while regular services are going on upstairs. And uh, yeah, I, I thought about doing something different this year, but I had a lot of moms just tell me, no, we, we still like to get our kids the good outfits and we and they, and they love the Easter egg hunt, so it's not broke. Don't fix it. Yeah, good. Ray, how about you guys? Um, our kids program. It's not the kids. They this year they're doing Jesus saves his peeps, and they're using those little peep mush marshmallow deals. And um, we're gonna do an Easter basket for them to take home. Maybe do some stations for them to go around and learn more about the Easter story. Um, and the and the kids that aren't able to come, this is something we did last year that was awesome. As we went and delivered Easter baskets to all our Bethel kids. Um, which is fun, engage the workers and kids that had to stay home with their parents. So we still have some, a lot of those that are, that are this time that are either special needs or have some kind of special health case and they'll be home. So we're gonna, we're gonna deliver Easter baskets as well. But the kids that come are gonna learn about Jesus saves his peeps. And then everyone's gonna take home uh, maybe a peep and something else to create some s'mores at the house. And then there's a note in there, it's gonna say, Jesus loves his peeps more than you know. And so it's just a silly play on words, but um, it's just so the parents can be engaged, the kids can have fun. Uh, but Jesus loves his peeps. We love our kids. Uh, and so we're, they're always excited about doing good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Other than peeps are the worst candy ever. <laughs> uh, Ray, what are you guys doing? Well, I've picked up some new ideas. I'm slightly adjusting them. We're going to give away free parkas here on Easter Sunday. I got that from Brian. We're just no t-shirts, but park, you know, snow parkas. And, uh, and maybe snowball fights instead of Easter egg hunt. <laughs> so, uh, no, but we always do uh, Easter as a celebration day. And so it's always just a big party and kid, teen and young adult ministries, obviously different, you know, uh, for young adults, they'll do an Easter quiz with prizes, but everybody has food and snacks and it really feels like a party celebrating, uh, you know, Christ rising. And I just picked up from Ray. That's a great idea. We've done a lot of uh, gift bag deliveries last year, but Ray, I'm gonna we're gonna make up an Easter bag, and every kid and team that couldn't be at church, we're gonna deliver them uh, the next week. So that's a great idea. Good, good, good. Yeah, when I pastored in Michigan, uh, a lot of our Easter egg hunts were pretty easy. You just had to go throw them out in the snow and let the kids dig through the snow to try to find them. So, uh, Brian, how about you guys in California? Yeah, so we've got a lot planned for our kids. One of the things that we we realized is a lot of parents usually get pictures, you know, at Christmas time with Santa Claus or with the Easter Bunny, and you can't do any of that right now. And so for us, that's one of those things that we can actually take advantage of and promote uh, that, hey, you can have a socially distanced uh, picture with the Easter Bunny uh, with a photo for your family. Um, we, we normally, uh, Sky Zone Trampoline Park is right across the street. I mean, it is the landmark in our North Orange County area. Everybody knows where it is. It's how we point to where our church is. So in years past, we rent the whole place out for free and we promote that. I mean, we had 
350 kids at Easter. Uh, I think our last Easter that we had just because of that, that draw, which of course drew those families and those people to come to Easter as well. We can't do that. Uh, and so for us, the sky zone is completely closed and, and has been through this whole time. So we're trying to pivot. So what we're going to do is uh, we're gonna do some um, well, petting zoo. Uh, we're gonna do the, um, the Easter egg hunt. Uh, and then this isn't for kids or this is for everybody, but we're going to, um, we're bringing several taco guys. Uh, it's kind of a Southern California thing uh, where you can get the taco guys. So we're actually going to do free tacos for everybody that, that wants to come as well, too. It's just kind of our, our draw. We call it our, uh, our stack. So I call it the Easter stack. And it's like, if I can have four or five things that are like the draws to be able to come, then those are the things that we equip our people with whenever they're going to promote online. Uh, to use our stack and then we'll give our stack of, of those things. Yeah, very cool. My hey, last question and we'll, we'll, we'll be done with this. Uh, what do you, what's your assimilation or your follow-up look like uh, for your guests uh, that come? You know, that's uh, typically you have a lot of guests, first time guests on Easter or uh, people that have only been coming a little bit. What do you do to follow up uh, with them? What's that look like? Do you use a uh, a computer program that you just plug in and just your system's kind of automated or how do you follow up maybe different on Easter Sunday? Uh, Nathan, why don't you get us started? Uh, we'll still do the same thing that we do every week is we have a connect card that's in the chair in on the back of the one in front of them. They can fill it out. They'll drop it off at the, the next step center and we have a gift for them there. And on that connect card, it asks them if they want to be contacted. Uh, for me personally, I don't like the phone call that I didn't from a business or, or uh, a vacation resort that I didn't ask for. So I don't want to be the guy that, that is already putting the pressure on. I know there's a different, there's different ways to look at that. Um, so anyone who, who extends a, a, um, you know, an inquiry, then we'll run with that. They can, they'll be contacted by one of the pastors uh, they'll get a, uh, a letter in the mail. And then if they want someone to talk to them, certainly if they want to talk about salvation. Uh, and then, of course, the pastors and staff will be available afterward uh, all throughout the building in case someone wants to go and make a, a contact there. So that's kind of what we're doing. Being in a smaller area, we don't have the, the difficulties maybe that, that Brian does to get someone who's maybe you know, across town, 30, 45 minutes. So it, it's a lot more uh, small network where we're at. Okay, sure. Ray, how about you? What do you do to follow up with your visitors? Yeah, we have a, a just, we have a normal flow. We use text and church. And so once, if anybody fills out the connect card, uh, we have a digital one, or you can do one in person, mostly digital. Um, they'll be in the workflow and they'll get a text, kind of a thank you for coming. They may get an email from one of the pastors or maybe a phone call if they've asked for one. Uh, but then we also, um, a couple days before Sunday, they'll get a, a, a reminder about the service coming up and then to stop by the, the cafe to get a special gift from us. And so it's just kind of a follow-up gift. Um, we have little mugs or tumblers, depending on the drink coffee or not. Um, then we have a, uh, it's called Bethel Connect. It's our kind of next steps class. And so we invite people into the next steps class as well to kind of hear more about Bethel, who we are, how they can get plugged in. Um, so it's pretty normal. Easter is a little different just because there might be a few more people. So we always engage our host team. Um, one thing we've done recently is we'll have a little, a little postcard that the host team, if they know someone, they can fill it out and actually send them a postcard uh, specifically from them. And so that's been, that's been a lot of fun. Good, good, good. Randy, how about you guys? Uh, well, different than it used to be. Uh, we used to have a, an extremely effective good neighbor ministry where people from all the surrounding towns and neighborhoods had a little stock of church coffee cups. And all I would do would be email them, hey, we had somebody from your area visit. They'd stop by on Tuesday and give them a church coffee mug filled with candy and hot cocoa. So we, this last year, that ministry went away. It just, it just didn't feel good anymore. Um, I think what we're going to do this year is uh, we're going to act, we're just going to get their information if we can. And up here in the north, that information does not come as quickly. Most people here may fill out that communication card in their second, third, or fourth Sunday visiting. And so we don't have a big pile of stuff uh, the day after Easter. It takes us weeks before they 
they come back and then tell us who they are. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to, I always try to promote a real practical series that comes right after Easter. And so we'll probably put as much promotion into come back for this series uh, as we do Easter itself, at least on the social media side, to, so that by whatever means they were invited the first time, they'll know, hey, here's a series, and we think that uh, you'll benefit from that to come to come back to. I think that's what we're going to do this year. Yeah, it's always important to have a, what your follow-up, what your sermon is after Easter is just as important as your Easter sermon. I truly sure. believe that. Uh, I always did a very high felt need series right after Easter. Uh, Brian, what are you guys doing to follow up in California? Yeah, very similar to what the guy said. The only thing I would add to an addition that we do is we try to put something in their hands about what our student ministry looks like, our kids ministry looks like, our parenting ministry, you know, special needs ministry, so that whenever they, they leave there, they know who we are. It's like a welcome book. And then we also always shoot a new video. So we'll usually have a two minute, you know, video and we don't play it before. We'll actually play it like right after the host section when people are already in our seats to say, hey, check out who we are here. And it'd be a two minute, but it'd be a snippet of all of those things that they would probably be interested in, in a church that we can be able to show lots of kids. We can be able to show people that look like them. We can be able to show, uh, you know, di different things from there. But I think our our follow-up thing that we've done that's worked well, we, we've done a good job of getting cards back and assimilating well. And the, here's a couple of things that we do it is on our connection card um, at the end in the very back, it'll say um, uh, A, B, C, D. And it just has those four letters. And what I'll say is I'll say, hey, we're doing our annual um, Easter spiritual survey. I actually do it on Easter and Christmas. I do the same process. But I'll say, uh, and so I'm going to ask 100% participation today uh, on this. I just want to know where you're at spiritually. So A, uh, I've already accepted Christ. If that's you, just circle A. B, I'm believing in Jesus for the very first time today. And I will have already done a salvation call. And I'll say, you prayed that prayer, asking Christ in your heart and life. If that's you, just circle B. C, I'm checking this out. I'm just investigating it. And if that's you and you're at the right place, keep coming, keep asking your questions, keep investigating. Uh, we're, we're, we're here, uh, you know, for you. And then D, I don't care. Hey, we get it. It's Easter. You had to come because your family invited you. Uh, and we just appreciate your honesty. And we'll do it online as well as in person. And then we're asking, um, and then we'll just, we'll ask for the whole congregation to be a part of our annual Easter survey so that we can just take a survey of where everyone is. Then we'll get those connection cards or, or be online. And then that allows us to be able to follow up on all the salvations, uh, next steps as far as baptism. But then the big push that I'm pushing people to uh, is my newcomer's dessert. And so we do a membership class and we do a newcomer's dessert. Every other month it changes. And so right after Easter, we'll go into the newcomer's dessert. And basically what that is, is everyone that's new uh, is invited to come to my house to meet Shannon and I for dessert. And I realize that everybody's different as far as people come to their house, but we're good. And we're like, hey, come over to our house. We'd love to just get to know you. There's no major agenda, but that's something that is a work for us to move people to that next step. And once they get to our house, then from our house, we'll move them into the membership class and say, hey, in four weeks, we've got a membership class. We'd love to hear more uh, or tell you more about how you can become part of the story God is writing here. And uh, we will have made relational connections that night that I think make it a little easier as an as a extra step to get into our, our membership class. So the, and our assimilation is very similar like you guys. We, we do text messages. We do handwritten cards. Uh, we do comeback gifts. We do beach balls for kids that they ride on the beach balls and send them in the mail. So we do a lot of the same stuff that, that everybody else does on assimilation, but I'm with you. I think that the, I don't judge Easter based upon how many we had at Easter. Uh, we've been doing this long enough. We know how to get people to come and, and these are be massive days. However, I want to see what does it look like the week after Easter? I want to see what's our retention look like in our next dessert and our next membership class. How many people do we have except Christ? And now take a step of baptism. It's more important than people just finding Jesus is people following Jesus. And so that discipleship aspect is really how I want to rate our Easter, not just a big attendance day. Yeah, great stuff. 
Uh, hey, this was good, uh, everybody. Hopefully this was a, a benefit to you, a lot of Easter ideas. Uh, this is obviously streamed uh, in the part of a virtual conference, uh, but it's also gonna be a standalone that you can watch later on YouTube just to get some of these ideas. Uh, and you know, all of us, the five of us on here, uh, we're praying that each one of you that are watching uh, has a great Easter service this year, uh, especially after what everybody had to endure last year. Uh, but I truly believe that uh, people are at a point where they're wanting to get out and, as some of you guys have said, uh, are hungry uh, for truth and hungry for hope. Uh, and that's what that's what we all have to offer. So uh, we're praying for great Easter services for all of us. Looking forward to hearing uh, what, how God works in your church this year. Thanks again uh, for being with us. Guys, thanks for joining us on the Zoom call. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Randy. Thank you.